what's up guys? Today I'll show you a horror film, Basket Case, Part 2. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins with a flashback to what happened earlier as the basket monster and Duane fell from the window of their apartment and were both brutally injured. Ominous music follows, after which a news reporter talks about the tragic incident. She refers to the basket monster as a twisted deformity and the news is watched by a grandmother named Granny and her granddaughter Babe. They change the channel to another news broadcast, where they see Duane's smashed face, followed by a report on how Duane and the basket monster were Siamese twins. They seem to recognize Duane and his brother and decide to help them out. They walk away from the room, but miss the part where it's mentioned that the basket monster had seemingly killed the doctors who had separated him from Duane. Now the scene ships to the hospital, where Duane is seen recovering from his injuries. A nurse tends to him after greeting a hunky man. However, she can hear monstrous breathing and checks out the basket monster. She looks frightened to see him, so she leaves the room to talk to the hunky man. However, Goat the basket monster and Duane wake up from their comas. They break free from their captivity, but the nurse doesn't notice this, as she's too busy talking to the hunky man. Their flirting is cut short when the nurse is asked out on a morning date, and it only gets worse when the hunky man notices that Duane is not in his bed anymore. He goes to check out the scene, but the basket monster grabs him, ending his hunky life with Duane watching in a psychotic fashion. After that, the brothers go into another patient's room and hold him hostage while they change their clothes. Meanwhile, a blonde reporter named Blonde is taken to the receptionist by the security man for trespassing. She claims that she's here to talk to Duane and has special permission to do so, but eventually bribes the security man to have her way. This only leads to a clash of ethics between Blonde and the security man. Meanwhile, Duane and Basket Monster make their escape from the hospital in a rather conspicuous disguise. However, as they get out of the hospital, they are found by Granny and Babe, both of whom claim that they are here to help. Duane looks rabid at first, but eventually gets into the car and makes his escape. Later, he wakes up to see multiple monsters that look like his Siamese twin. After some more time, Babe and Granny have a chat with Duane and say that he's in a safe place now. Granny now goes to talk to Basket Monster and tries to win him over. She mentions that she was a friend of his aunt, and she takes care of other freaks just like him. Basket Monster starts trusting Granny, but she says that he has to live by her rules because he's in her house. Basket Monster seems cooperative, so Granny offers him a new basket, and then Babe takes him up to the attic. Here we learn that Granny is raising all kinds of deformed freaks, such as a singing face and an ugly witch. After making this introduction, Granny introduces Eve, who immediately charms Basket Monster with her eyes. Later, Blonde meets her boss, who wants to run a story on the Siamese twins. She says that there's a dead end on her front, but Boss wants to make money, so he says they have to find more information on Duane and Basket Monster. After a brief argument, Boss mentions to Blonde that he knows Granny in her freak house, because his company used to run stories on her. This is a good lead for Blonde to start on, so she gets to work and calls up a bald man named Baldy, who is running an ad for a new monster he's got on display. Baldy acts hesitant at first, but eventually agrees to meet Blonde in exchange for $100. As he celebrates his latest bribe, Baldy hears a doorbell and opens the door to see Granny. She begs him to see the new monster he has on display, which he claims to be Basket Monster. Baldy gives Granny a tour of his freaky circus, but it turns out that he's simply running a scam with fake props. Granny rebutes him for being a fraud and leaves temporarily. Baldy brings out a bottle of wine for reassurance, but Granny comes back with a basket case and tells Baldy that he owes Basket Monster an apology. He doesn't believe her at first, but his curiosity gets the better of him, and he opens the lid. As expected, Basket Monster attacks Baldy and kills him easily. Later, Blonde shows up to meet Baldy, but after a brief search, she finds his dead body and freaks out. Blonde goes back to her office and meets her co-worker. Her story makes him go crazy with all kinds of theories, and he even tries to get freaky with Blonde. However, she tells him to keep it professional and offers to bring him along for her new investigation. The next day, Babe goes shopping for the freaky monsters, but is harassed by a shady man who tries to invite her over for a drink. She refuses his advances and goes away, much to the shady man's dismay. At the freak house, Granny tries to help Basket Monster by addressing his mental health issues arising from the trauma of being separated from Duane. As the therapy continues, Duane's face is back to normal now. He sees Babe entering the house and goes down to meet her, while also being greeted by a couple more freak monsters. Duane tries to rejoice over the fact that he's finally free from his brother, but Babe tells him that he is also a freak and will never be able to leave the freak house. This makes Duane upset, and he walks away from Babe. 
he starts to remember the conversation between his dad and the doctors when they operated on him and Basket Monster. The memory riles him up, and then Babe comes to console him, using her words but not muscles. However, Dewey is not ready to listen to her bullshit and laments his sorry state of existence. Now, Dewey gets flashbacks to when he was separated from his brother by the doctors. It's a bit much for him to withstand, so he goes to meet Basket Monster. He asks Granny where he is, and she tells him to go to the attic. However, she also wants to resume therapy sessions with Duane, although he has no interest in doing the same. Duane goes to the attic and avoids some awkward moments with the other freaks. He then finds Basket Monster next to Eve and interrupts their smelly moment. Duane carries the basket case to a cabin and has a chat with his brother in private. He says that he deserves to be free and wants a second shot at life. Basket Monster quietly listens to Duane in his rant but ends up laughing at him when he says he loves Babe. Later, Blonde and her co-worker reach the freak house, but it's only Blonde who decides to go inside. She finds Granny and has a sweet chat with her, but Granny can smell her bullshit from a mile away. She says that she despises smelly news reporters like Blonde because they had ruined all the work that she put into these freaks. Granny also adds that she has nothing to do with freak monsters anymore and tells Blonde to get lost. However, as Blonde is being sent away, Dewey enters the house with the basket case, and it leads to an awkward moment. Granny tries to avoid the situation by calling Dwayne by another name, and he plays along, but with horrible acting. Blonde doesn't get fooled, so she quickly runs to her co-worker in the car and tells him what she saw. Blonde is sure that Basket Monster is also there, and decides to betray her boss so that she can make all the money from this story for herself. Meanwhile, Granny and the others try to figure out a plan of action, and Duan decides to stay back and fight, rather than run away like a scared chicken. This makes Granny excited, because it's going to be just like old times for her again. At night, Granny makes a dramatic entrance in front of all the freak monsters, and gives a powerful speech. She talks about how Blonde is going to violate their privacy, and states that they will need to fight the smelly reporters, because running away is not an option. All the freaks agree with Granny and cheer her on as she turns into a psycho. After the lengthy and erratic speech, Granny and Babe cause a distraction by leaving in their van, and this prompts Blonde to send her co-worker to the freak house. He overhears Duane talking to someone on the phone, mentioning that Basket Monster is in the attic. The co-worker makes use of this information and follows Duane to take his pictures. Duane continues his acting in front of him and tricks him into going up to the attic. The co-worker finds the freaks there and starts taking pictures with his flash camera. However, this only leads to a horrifying sequence where the freaks close in on him in alternate flash shots. He turns around to see Basket Monster crawling toward him and is immediately attacked. One of the freaks takes his camera and starts shooting pictures of the entire attack with the same flash shots. A brutal sequence follows as the reporter gets killed by all the freaks while Duane listens to his screams with psychotic pleasure. Blonde notices the flashes on the windows and gets the hint that her co-worker has been killed. She immediately rushes to her boss and tells him about what happened. Boss wants to call the cops, but Blonde tells him she needs to talk to Duane first. Boss calls up the freak house and threatens Babe into giving the phone to Duane. She does as he says, and then Duane is invited for a brief chat over dinner and drinks. Later, Duane goes to meet Boss at a bar, and they have a word about the co-worker. Duane gets frustrated by Boss's accusations, so he gets up and is about to leave. However, Boss manages to use his manipulation words to coax Duane over to his side. However, Duane starts talking like a psycho and says that in the House of Freaks, it's the humans who are out of place. Duane walks away, and that's when Boss learns that he's the one who's been played, not the other way around. Everyone at the bar is revealed to be a freak monster as they take off their masks one by one. This is too much for Boss to handle, so Duane mocks him in front of the freaks. Boss takes out his gun and tries to make a silent escape, but he trips into the storage room and finds the dead body of the bar's manager. On top of the dead body is Basket Monster, who attacks Boss immediately. What follows is a fierce and brutal encounter, where Basket Monster rips Boss's face apart while Duane and the freaks watch on in amazement. Eventually, Boss manages to fire some shots, but it's of no use as he is killed and smashed out of the storage room by Basket Monster. The freak team gets a hold of Boss's wallet, and they learn about Blonde's address through her business card. Granny and Babe decide to play around with Blonde for her smelly tactics, so the freak team goes to her place. After her shower, Blonde gets a call on her phone and anxiously answers it, but doesn't hear anything on the other line. This happens once again, so she tries calling her boss. But it's of no use as her phone line has been cut. Things go from bad to worse for Blonde as she runs into Duane, who starts taunting her for being a fishy reporter. 
Blonde is briefly scared when Duane opens a basket case in front of her, but it's shown to be empty. Duane says that Basket Monster is roaming around freely, so Blonde gets scared and tries to run her blonde body away. However, she runs into all the freak monsters inside her house, and a freaky sequence follows. Blonde loses her mind and gets hold of a kitchen knife. She threatens Duane and the other freaks, but Duane shows her a basket and invites her to see what's inside it. Blonde inexplicably opens the basket and finds Basket Monster inside it, who then attacks and rips her apart in front of the other freaks. However, this time Blonde is left alive because her face also looks like that of a freak after the attack. Later, Granny and the freaks have a good time, and Babe goes to check up on Duane. She finds him sitting alone in his room, and he tells her that they should run away from here. Babe is hesitant at first, but then, Duane grabbed her and Tong massages her face. He feels something odd on his face, and Babe explains that it's because Basket Monster is also in love. This can be seen as Basket Monster is kissing Eve at the same time. As Duane and Babe get freaky, Basket Monster engages with Eve in some aggressive hormone yoga. Duane wants to take off Babe's clothes, but she reveals that she was once with a man who got her pregnant. It's been six years now, but the baby is still being prepared by Granny for a smooth delivery. Duane doesn't understand this, but is shocked to see a snake monster inside Babe's stomach. Realizing that she is also a freak, Duane loses his mind and acts like a psycho. Babe tries to console him, but he accidentally pushes her out of the window and onto the dinner table. Granny and the freaks watch on in horror as Babe dies in front of them. Granny tells the freaks to look for Duane, and they begin their search. However, Duane has completely gone nuts, and he finds a baseball bat as his weapon. He then goes to Basket Monster and takes him away from Eve by smashing him with the baseball bat. Then, he takes him to a room and stabs him multiple times with a needle, seemingly to stitch them back together. Granny and the freaks reach the room, but are horrified to see Duane and Basket Monster stuck together once again like Siamese twins. The movie ends with Duane laughing like a psycho, while Basket Monster suffers in silence. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.